What is up guys, I'm Francis the Instructor. Welcome back to the tutorial series of our videos and in this one, we're gonna be talking about dual carriageways. So, let's go and drive around dual carriageways and show you what you should be looking out for on your driving test. First of all, if we're talking about dual carriageways, we have to recognize what a dual carriageway is. Is this a dual carriageway? This is not a dual carriageway. Good reason for that is because us and the oncoming traffic are not separated by anything physical. We're only separated by a painty line. A dual carriageway is when you and the oncoming traffic are separated by something physical, whether that's grass or concrete or a barrier, that is what makes it a dual carriageway. Okay, so let's turn left here. Okay, so here's a new road. This is the A1. Is this a dual carriageway? Yes, it is. And what makes it a dual carriageway? It's not because it's got two lanes on our side. It could have three, four, five lanes on our side and it doesn't make it a dual carriageway. What makes it a dual carriageway is the barrier in the middle. And that means that we've got two carriageways, one for us and one for the oncoming traffic. If you're taking your theory test or you've taken your theory test, that's essential information to know because there are questions about dual carriageways on it. So firstly, when you get onto a dual carriageway, let's say you're doing this for the first time with your friends, family, mum, dad, or even driving instructor, you're, you're gonna, gonna stick to the left lane because the left lane is the easiest lane and it's the slowest lane and it's the lane where you can take your time and feel comfortable. Do you remember when you first did 20 or 30 mile an hour roads? or even, let's rewind back even more. When you first started driving and you were on side roads learning how to turn left and right, how fast were you going? You were going at about five, 10 miles an hour max. That felt okay and it felt manageable. Why did it feel okay and manageable? It felt okay and manageable because that's the speed that you can normally think at. You walk at 10 miles an hour, you can run, let's say at maybe 15 miles an hour. So your brain's used to working at that speed. If we now up the pressure and we start going at 30 miles an hour, do you remember the first time you went on a 30 mile an hour road? It was fast. The first time you went on a 40 mile an hour road, mind blown, it was crazy. It's just because your brain isn't used to thinking at that speed that quickly. So we're now on a 50 mile an hour road and I've driven at 50 miles an hour before, so I'm pretty confident I'm joining this road and it's not gonna be too much of a problem. But for the first time you do it, make sure that you're in control, you're with someone who can help you and you're not trying to rush too much. Next, let's talk about following distance. Following distance is super important. What's your appropriate following distance on a dry road? I'll give you a second. Do you remember this from your theory test? It's two seconds. In the rain, it's four seconds or wet conditions and in snow and ice, it's 10 seconds. How do you measure that? I know you know how to count to two, but how do you measure two seconds in distance? When that lorry in front passes something stationary, we're gonna count to two. And if we pass it before that time, then we're too close. So let's try that now. The lorry's passing a lamppost, one second, two se Oh, we're a little bit too close. Just a little bit. I need to be able to count all the way to two before I get to that lorry. And here's a good trick that they use on the driving test or that we like to teach people. Only a fool breaks the two second rule. It takes just over two seconds to say that sentence if you're not rushing. If you can say that sentence in full before you get to the next stationary object, then you're okay. If you're getting there first, then you're too close. And it's really important and it's relative. So if you're at 70 miles an hour on a motorway, that two seconds is gonna be a lot longer. Let's try and find that two second gap when we set off again. This is why it's a really good idea to just stick to the left lane. When it's the first time you've done this, we're just gonna stick to the left lane, take it nice and easy behind some lorries or some slow, slower moving vehicles so that we don't have to feel like we're under too much pressure to rush. Okay, so let's look at that lamppost. Only a fool breaks the two second, oh, I didn't get to say rule. So we need to back off a little bit. Try again, only a fool breaks the two second rule. Perfect, there's a two second gap. If I'm any closer, then I'm gonna be in danger. If that lorry crashes into something, I'm not gonna have the braking distance to be able to stop before I get to that lorry if I'm too close. I know, I know, I know, I know. You see people traveling at this, this stupid distance between each other in London. It's absolutely crazy, but, if you're not keeping yourself safe, no one else will. If someone else wants to travel that close to you, that's all right, what are you gonna do? This is a theory test question. If someone is tailgating you, which is traveling too close behind you, what's the remedy for that? Do you speed up, slow down, hoot your horn, or wave at them out of the window? I'll give you a second. Slow down, it decreases your danger. If we're going slower, it decreases the danger. If they do then something stupid and crash into us, we're all at a slower speed. 
Okay, next, we've worked out safe following distances. Let's now talk about how to overtake. You're getting a little bit more confident and now you're ready to start going a little bit faster and overtake some of the slower moving vehicles like this lorry who really should be in the left lane. Let's break it down into three stages. We need to do three things to do a lane change and we can't do them all together. We need to break them down and do them one after the other. First thing, check your mirrors, see what's around you. Second thing, indicate. Let everybody else now know what you're about to do. And then the third thing is move. We need to break those things down and separate them so that we're not doing them all together. First of all, check your mirrors and then have time to just take in that information. So if there is a car there on your right, you're not gonna move. Then signal and then give everyone else a chance to acknowledge your signal. If you signal and move at the same time and if there's something that you maybe haven't really judged properly, they won't have time to take evasive action or be warned that you're about to do something unexpected. Especially cars behind, if they're planning on moving as well at the same time, if you put a signal one it might show them that they could hold back on their move and let you go first okay so let's try that now I'm checking my right mirror and I can see there's a, a bit of a gap there so I'm gonna put a signal on now I'm letting everyone else acknowledge that signal and then I'm gonna move and I did check my blind spot do you see that I tell you why I check my blind spot there because there's three lanes on this road if there's three lanes on the road I'm gonna check my blind spot why because if I'm in lane one moving into lane two and there's a vehicle in lane three moving into lane two at the same time that vehicle from lane three is gonna be in my blind spot so I need to make sure that there's nothing there before I move and I'm not taking a massive turn of my head like that I'm just taking a little check over my shoulder to the area that the mirrors aren't going to show me if I take a massive check over my shoulder it's going to encourage me to steer right which is not a good thing especially if you're not looking over your shoulder to see that you're steering right at the same time okay so I'm setting off confidently because I know the speed limit is 40 I'm going to prove that I know that the speed limit is 40 the only way that you can prove that on your driving test is by getting up to 40 miles an hour once I'm there because there's nothing on my left I'm going to mirror signal and move back again i don't want my signal to be misleading and make it look like i'm taking that turning so i turned it off quite early the only reason that you should not be in this lane is if you're overtaking or turning right and obviously if you're turning right you need to get that done quite quickly because the traffic is quite busy and it's a fast road joining the dual carriageway let's recognize what lane we need to be in the left lane unless we're overtaking or turning right the speed limit on this road is 40 miles an hour which i'm doing right now see that white van on the right they're currently traveling at the same speed as us. Do they need to be in that lane? Let's think about this. In Europe, they get this so right. Everybody travels in the right lane unless they're overtaking. And when they're overtaking, they move back for, and when they're overtaking, they move back straight away. Obviously they travel on the right because they're on the other side of the road to us. See, I'm done overtaking, so I'm moving straight back to the left, straight away. Why? It makes the road so much more efficient. It works so much better. If there was a police car traveling down this road, maybe, maybe not, they could get pulled over and fined for traveling in the wrong lane. If you're not overtaking and you're not turning right, you've got no business in the overtaking lanes. That's super important because it does happen. If you're middle lane hogging, you might get pulled over and get fined. And don't say I didn't tell you. Okay, so let's think about overtaking. I'm doing 36 miles an hour and I'm coming up on this white Audi and I'm gonna move over again because the van is middle lane hogging. Really and truly should be in the left lane, but isn't. And if I was on a driving test right now, I would think about overtaking. The driving test isn't asking you to just drive as slowly as possible. They don't think that slow is safe. That's not how it works. Driving at the appropriate speed. It's an audition, let's think about it like this. It's an audition to get a proper driving license like everybody else on the road. So you don't wanna be driving like an old granny because I'm sure your old granny wouldn't pass a driving test if she tried to do it again tomorrow, would she? So you wanna be driving at normal speeds and if there's someone in the left lane driving like your old granny, you need to overtake them. You need to be doing the speed limit and getting on with the drive. So that might mean sometimes overtaking. If this is your first time doing it, if you're not confident on dual carriageways and driving at speeds like 30, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour even, you need to go and practice it more. Your driving instructor should be taking you out onto these roads if they're likely to come up on your driving test. If you're practicing with friends, family, mum or dad, you need to be asking to go out onto dual carriageways so that you can get confident driving at speed and overtaking and driving with the flow of traffic, keeping your correct distance from the car in front, all of these kind of things are gonna be expected for you to demonstrate on your driving test. The examiner won't ask you if you know this stuff, they'll just expect you to demonstrate it by doing it. All right, let's stop on the right in a safe place. 
Guys, hope you found that helpful. Dual, dual carriage ways is a really important subject to cover with your instructor right, because awesome. if you're on your driving test, the examiners can take you on dual carriage ways and dual carriage ways can go up to 50, 60 miles an hour. If you're not confident at 50, 60 miles an hour and you get that on your driving test, whoa, it's gonna be scary. The driving test is a really lonely place when you're there sitting in the driving seat and there's no one there to help you. Make sure yeah. that you're practicing this. If you're not confident with anything, like what I've said today, roundabouts, dual carriage ways, anything like that, you need to go and revise it. So more. If you've got your driving test coming up, please make sure that you're ready. I'm Francis, the instructor for Get Licensed Driving School, and I'll catch you guys in the next video.